After multiple, multiple requests, I am finally doing a tutorial on how to strap bomb your enemy into total, complete submission. So, this has been requested probably like 20 times at this point, so here we go. Anyway, first off, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters and the normal supporters and subscribers and viewers on the channel, because without all of you guys, there would be nobody to watch this video, and then that means this video just wouldn't simply exist because no one's out there watching whatever, you get the idea. So. Now, let's talk about strap bombers, how OP they can truly, truly be. So, one thing people don't realize, 99% of multiplayer lobbies you're going to find have a rule against strap bombers. I don't understand why that is. They are one of the easiest things to counter on this game. It just takes a little bit of production. So, here is what you need to realize when pretty much going up against strap bombers and then using them. Strap bombers have insane air defense. As you can see, we have 30 air defense and the fighters for air attack only have 18 which means for every one bomber we would lose the enemy with this level would probably lose one to maybe two fighters at least one so that's kind of the idea now this defense on these bombers are 30 heavy fighters are what you need to use to engage strap bombers always heavy fighters are really the only way to totally take down strategic bombers to prove it air attack is 36 which means it overpowers the air defense of a strategic bomber and the air attack on a strategic bomber as crazy as it is is 50 the air defense on a fighter is 10 so i can see why some people in multiplayer lobbies ban these however all you need is heavy fighters i don't understand why people have such a big problem with people using strap bombers now let's talk about how to totally use these and make your enemy just completely fall into submission so we have 200 strap bombers here and we're at war with germany so what you're going to do after you have your strap armor selected is pick one of three targets by this little button right here, which is going to allow you to specifically target certain areas. This was added with the Waking the Tiger DLC. Now, do you need it to actually do this? I don't know. Best way to check on this is to just load up Hearts of Iron, pick a bomber, and see if you have this little plus here. If you don't, either A, you need to update, uh, update your game, and if you update it and it still don't, have it i guess it is a feature with waking the tiger i could be wrong someone's in the comments is probably gonna start telling people about it so one of three targets are always going to be your priority number one is always 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 going to be the infrastructure i don't care what anyone says number one target's always infrastructure second target is civs third target is synthetics and then the fourth target is military factories now if you are needing them to bomb a fort line or something of course use them to bomb the fort line this is just if you're going to be laid back you know just trying to inflict the most damage on that nation to stall them out so how would really bombing the infrastructure even work well first off let's go ahead and use these strap bombers here let's get some up here really quick germany under attack i know i'm in an offensive war whatever so our strap bombers are almost there they must have i don't care so Here's our strap bombers, right? Like I said, we're going to... Well, actually, there's something else overpowered, too. You can directly tell them to target airfields. Now, this only gives a 30% chance of targeting the airfields. Now, once you click this objective, you need to tell them to start strap bombing. You can then click the area while still in this mode. You get this nice little pretty screen here, which tells us that 43% of our planes are being disrupted. What does that mean? That means they have been engaged and are not going to complete their bombing mission and must return to base and they will do a bombing mission around the next day at the same time. You can also click details and it pulls out more information, which as you can see, we're barely bombing their airfields. We're not really doing much damage to their airfields whatsoever. So this would tell us because it's only point one to change it up and try to target maybe some AA, maybe some synthetic factories. Have they got any synthetics? Nope. Now see, this only gives a 30% extra, 30 to 40% extra chance of specifically hitting these targets instead of just base stuff. Now, how can you truly make strat bombers incredibly overpowered? I've got quite a few thousand here, okay? As a United States, it would probably very easily, once you're in 1940, and I've done this too, around 1940 in multiplayer games, one game in particular that did allow strat bombers, that was the United States, I mass produced strap bombers around 1940-ish because we could not stop Germany. He had some really powerful tank divisions. He was really close to Moscow. I think he was like around in this zone getting ready to take it. I began telling all my bombers to strap bomb the infrastructure. How severe 
is this really to somebody once you start strap bombing the infrastructure? Well, we're just going to strap bomb all their infrastructure, right? Just bomb, just bomb it all. So we're going to be targeting a lot of their infrastructure. And always when you're doing this, the number one place you want to start strap bombing from or strap bombing to is going to be their capital. Why is that? Because all the supply comes from the capital in the first place. So you want to make a priority of bombing there. And more than likely, if you're a multiplayer, the person's team is going to make priority of defending there. Now, look at how powerful this is. Wait, let me make sure the AI is off first. Because I don't want them changing that stuff up. So, here's our construction. As you can see, we did hit one of their air bases and we hit a sieve, but no synthetics. Now, with thousands of bombers in the sky, look at this. Look at our supply plummet from the capital. Just watch it. We're at 100. Next day, we're at 98. And look at all the zones around here. Because the supply that's coming out of our capital is getting so damaged that all the other units are starting to lose it. Now, there's another couple ways you can use this to your advantage. And I mean truly, truly, truly to your advantage. So, what you would do is more than... Well, actually, let me go back to uh, England really quick and I'll tell you this. Because I just want to strap on only their capital and show you the true damage you can really mass produce with this because now they don't really have enough uh, planes to fight so supply again 83 eh, sticking around 83 eh, whatever but I mean you guys get the idea but once it drops this low I think it actually stabilizes around that area or something like that like it can't be bombed any worse and you know, know whatever anyway so no, it's still going down. But here's a way you can truly just devastate somebody. All right. If you have a ton of strap bombers and a bunch of transport planes, also known as C-47s, also known as sky trains, they're basically the transport planes. Wait, no, this isn't a mod. I forgot. They're basically everyone starts with them. They are these things, the transport planes. If you have enough of these, like a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, and you have tons of strap bombers, you can bomb the enemy infrastructure and then tell the uh, planes to do air resupply. Uh, the air resupply, here they are, is this little objective right here. I think this is a feature only in Waking the Tiger. What you would do is you would click this, right click the zone, and what it's telling the airplanes to do is to begin resupplying the troops in that zone. Now, what some players have been doing, and this is what got Strap Bombers really banned. Uh, this is kind of crazy. I don't even know if I should tell you guys this. People would Strap Bomb the infrastructure all the way in northern France. And once it's bombed like that, they would then start using planes. And they would have resupply missions going on while the troops are landing in France. So the U.S. troops or whoever's over there fighting, the Germans, are going to be totally supplied. And these guys are going to be just totally attritioned out i mean completely attritioned out and see you can see it's done a lot of damage like a lot and if they don't have the ability to resupply these that they're in so much trouble now if we wanted to target not germany now something else you can do with these to show you here instead of infrastructure let's just start bombing exclusively the military factories now, this is why I don't entirely recommend doing this, is because, well, eh, it's kind of mixed, but no. Tell them to bomb the military factories, airfields, civilian factories, and logistics, or, you know, the roads. Now, if we go back again, this is going to show you how truly insane this is. Watch our airfields. Our airfields are being bombed. The airfields themselves are being bombed. What does this mean? This means that eventually the airfields are going to be at such a bad level. Once they get down to zero, the fighters do no missions. And look, then we lose the ability to even fight them off. So once your supply get or your planes go like that, it's over for them. And as you can see, our supply at our capital is already down to 43, 45. Okay, now it's dropping because apparently I didn't have some of the planes. And all the other supply in these areas is what? 30s. So if you had large armies, like a couple hundred troops or something, that this would decimate. That this would absolutely just completely take you out of the war. So main priority, I would say bomb airfields, then bomb the uh, infrastructure, then the civs or the civs first so they can't really repair anything and the airfields and then logistics. It's entirely up to you, but that's just some ways I like to strap bombs. So 
Hopefully this video helped you out. Please go down below and tell me, did this help you out? I appreciate all of you guys' support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time, and stay awesome.